Lansing, Michigan. Welcome the 45th President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Thank you. I feel so guilty you're waiting out here in the rain. They gave me a hat. I said, you know, they've been waiting out here for hours. I shouldn't put on a hat, right? They even said, sir, we have the car. It's going to take you from the beautiful Air Force One. Isn't that a beauty? But they're going to take you from Air Force One. I said, I got to walk it. I mean, these people are tough. They're from, they're from Lansing. They're from Michigan. I gotta walk it. I gotta walk it. Don't give me the umbrella. I'm soaking wet already. Uh, but hello, Lansing. Hello, Michigan. This was the scene of a great victory. Remember that? Four years ago, Donald Trump has won the state of Michigan. Oh, that was big. Hadn't been done in decades, but we're I don't know if you saw the poll just came out. We're up three in Michigan. And I think we're up a lot more. You know, they give you the fake polls. I, I think we're up a lot more. We're going to have a great red wave people that want to go out and vote, vote. They want to go out and they want to touch. They want to vote. It's a great red wave. It's happening in Florida. We're up in Florida. Up four. Up four. You know, I'm watching these guys, the way they talk, the poll, oh, they're down 25 in Michigan. I said, no, we're going to win Michigan. No. No, I kid when I say 25, but they, they put numbers. You know, they're called suppression, suppression polls. They make you, like, feel badly. So you say to your wife, or you say to your husband, darling, let's go out to dinner, and then we'll come back. We love our president. But, you know, the polls say he can't win. Well, right now we're leading in almost everywhere. The real, we're leading almost everywhere. Now, I've got to say, I'm working my ass off here. This is, this is Sleepy Joe. The guy goes, the guy goes to his basement. He's, he's got another lid. You know, he goes to the basement. The lid, right? That's the garbage can. They put a lid on you. Now, yesterday, we had three big ones, really big. In Pennsylvania, it was incredible. The crowds were incredible, like this. They're all packed. They got people outside. I see people in the streets. It's crazy. I always say to my people, why don't you just get a bigger airport? Get a bigger. Well, these are better than the arenas because, you know, our rallies are bigger than they've ever been. And the arenas, even if it's 18,000 people, we've had 40, 45, 50. We, you can't hold them. And you know what's nice? You get out of the plane, you say a few words, you go back to the plane, you say, bye-bye, vote for me. But that's actually what Democrats do. They say, they say, vote for me, and they're lovely to you for a few months before the election. And after the election, it's, they're gone. And nobody's done for Michigan what I have. You have car plants being built all over. And you didn't have a plant built in 42 years. You have them all over. I tell Japan, I tell Germany, no, no, we're not interested. Go and build plants. And I always suggest Michigan because I have to tell you, I think of course I think of Michigan. When I got the man of the year, I got man of the year in Michigan a long time ago, like 12 years ago, nothing to do with politics. They wrote man of the year. I came here and I gave a big lecture on the fact. I said, Mexico is stealing your plants. They go into Canada, they go into, you lost 32% of your car production. I said, what the hell is going on? It turned out to be quite a controversial acceptance, but I felt that. It's probably the number one reason that I'm standing here because of trade. And have we turned that around? Yes, Seven days from now, we're going to win the great state of Michigan. And we're going to win four more years in the White House. And by the way, there has never been a campaign.
There has never been a campaign in the history of this country. First of all, there's never been a movement like this. There's never been. But there's never been a campaign, and we had the record, you know, the record was four years ago, that has had more enthusiasm or bigger crowds. There's never been. Don't forget, they may have a crowd that's a big crowd the night before an election, you know, but not really. There's never been, this is the idea. Thank you. That's really nice. A phrase I really, I say, I don't think they'll find it, because look at all of them back there. Look at them. Look, oh. Hello, John Roberts. He's been very nice to us. John Roberts has been very nice to us. Thank you, John. But John, there's never been a phrase, we love you in the history of politics. I don't care where you go. And it happens, and I love you too. I do, I love you too. That's why we're here. But there's never been anything like this in terms of enthusiasm, in terms of crowds. I saw Obama this morning. He had a couple of cars there, honking their horn. And then I saw Sleepy Joe. So he came out yesterday, right? And you're going to see this. He came out yesterday, and he made a speech, and then they had to rip him off the stage because he had lost it, because he's gone. Once again, Michigan is going to answer the call of history and show the world that sleepy Joe Biden, his dark money donors, and his corrupt special interests, and by the way, there's never been anything like this. He goes into a country, and the family walks out with millions of dollars, millions and millions of dollars. And then the press isn't allowed to report. The press doesn't report it. They don't cover it. New York Times, Washington Post, they don't cover it. CNN, you know, I introduced a great justice of the Supreme Court last night, right? They say it's the most important thing a president can do. I say maybe military, but regardless, we've rebuilt our military like nobody would ever believe. But you know what? It's one of the most important, especially because this turns the court. They had a whole thing, most important thing in 50 years. And CNN and MSDNC didn't cover. They didn't cover. They wouldn't cover. They just could, even though the ratings go through the roof. 60 Minutes had very good ratings the other night, a fake report, but it, the ratings go through the roof. But they didn't cover my introduction. Can you believe that? My introduction of a woman that's going to be there hopefully for 50 years, as far as I'm concerned. And last night we did. We made history and we confirmed Amy Coney Barrett to the United States Supreme Court. And Justice Barrett will defend our rights, will defend our liberties and our God-given freedom. She's going to be fantastic and she's a terrific person. Joe Biden. Kamala, do you like Kamala? Do you like her to be your first president? I don't know. If he gets elected three weeks into his presidency, they'll say, Kamala, are you ready? Let's go. That's why they're talking about the that's why they talk about the 25th Amendment, right? Three weeks. Three weeks in Joe's shot. Let's go, Kamala, you ready? Most liberal person in the Senate. She makes Bernie Sanders look like a serious conservative. This this will not be, we can't let it happen, this will not be the first woman president. You're going to have a woman president. This will not be the first woman president. That's a lot of cameras back there. Yeah, that's right. They're all, they're all screaming, Ivanka. You know, Ivanka, you know, she's great. She just loves it. She's out campaigning today, doing really well. But she could be very happy. Her husband's here, Jared Kushner. He's making peace in the Middle East. He's here. Where's, where's Jared? Where's Jared? We've got to find him. You know, he's never around too much. He's always sort of, he doesn't want any accolades. But he's done something nobody else has done. He's leading peace in the Middle East without blood. Hi, Jared. He doesn't want to be outside. He's Mr. Inside, but he's smart. But Ivanka, 
She'd be very happy just being at home with the kids and we got her working. And you know who's making a speech today? First Lady, she's out in Pennsylvania. She's out in Pennsylvania. People love our First Lady. Our First Lady's doing a great job. I mean, she got the plague from China. So did I. So did Barron. Barron recovered in about 12 minutes. How you feeling, Barron? Okay. What was the problem, Baron? I don't know. I didn't think I had a problem. The doctor told me, tested, sir, uh, your son has tested positive. I see him like 12 seconds later. Doctor, how's he doing? He's, he's all better. Did you give him any? <laughs> Doc, did you give him one of those miracle cures? No, sir, he just recovered. Hey, young kids have a very strong immune system. Nobody even knew it. Get your children back to school. Get them back to school. I mean, your governor's a disaster. They got to open up this. They got to open up this state. And she's got to keep her husband away from sailing and fishing. The only one that's free in your state is her husband. No, it's no good. It's no good. You can't do it. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. Of course, she has it the reverse. You know, she's got the in the Harris. And he actually said it, didn't he? In the Harris Biden, you know, I have a great vice president, and we all do. But, and I want to give him tremendous credit, but I will never say in the Pence Trump administration, I, I will never say that. But he says it. That's because he doesn't have any clue where he is. You saw that. And the radical Democrats want to pack the Supreme Court with far left justices who will shred our Constitution, abolish the Second Amendment, terminate religious liberty, shield violent criminals, and regulate your economy into oblivion. You will have a depression. If he gets in, he's going to raise your taxes at a level that nobody's ever seen. He is the first candidate I've ever seen who is running on a promise that I will raise your taxes. I've never heard that one. I've been involved and followed and studied politics for a long time. He'll be the first one. I will raise your taxes massively. This will be the biggest tax increase in history. I've never heard of that one before. I like running against that guy. This election is a matter of economic survival for Michigan. Look what I've done, we've all done together for this state. This state, you're building cars again. And if your union leaders weren't in the pockets of the Democrats, because we get the vote, but they got these guys that just, you know, they come to the White House, they're so nice to me, nice to me, but they go for the Democrats every time for a certain reason. Someday we'll talk about it. But the people, the workers are for us, and the workers are for me. Biden's plan to abolish the entire U.S. oil industry, you saw that? will cripple our nation and send us into a absolute deep depression. And you see what he did with fracking. There will be no fracking. There will be no, he doesn't say it that way. He goes, there will be no fracking. There will be no fracking. But he said it for like a year. And then he got to Pennsylvania, where we're leading. <laughs> but we're going to put it, see that big, beautiful screen? We'll have it up there. It's some, it saves me a lot of words. That screen is great. It costs a fortune. We only bring it to very important locations like Michigan. But then you can hear it in his own words. You don't say, oh, the president's exaggerating now. He said, no fracking, no fracking, no fracking. Then he goes to Pennsylvania, a million jobs, fracking. It's a big part of their economy. Big part of your economy from the standpoint of energy, right? And gas. How do you like the gasoline prices at $2, right? It's amazing. As they go up, you produce fewer and fewer cars. Well, I got you down to the lowest level. You are so lucky I'm president. I'm going to give another major tax cut after already having passed the largest tax cut in the history of our country. We're giving a very big middle income tax cut. Joe Biden spent the last 47 years outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in endless, ridiculous foreign wars, countries you've never even heard of for the most part. They're all coming back. You know that. They've been coming back, but our soldiers are all coming back. We're all over the place. 
We're all over the place. We're in places that even the top people in the country have never heard of these places. Biden was a cheerleader for NAFTA. You, you got killed by them. A catastrophe for the auto industry and for your state. Following NAFTA, one-third of the auto jobs left, and they went to Mexico and Canada, but they went to Mexico. Biden enthusiastically voted for China's entry into the World Trade Organization, fueling the rise of China on the backs of Michigan workers. What China has done, there has been nothing, nothing, nobody, no country, there has been no country that has ripped us off for 25 years, 30 years, like China. Hundreds of billions of dollars a year flows into China, and I put big, fat, beautiful tariffs on China. We took in tens of billions of dollars. Nobody else did it. And you know, when they targeted our farmers, I told the farmers, don't worry about it. And we gave them 28 billion, which is the amount they were targeted. We don't have too many farmers in this group. We gave them $28 billion, our farmers. Everybody's happy with that? You got about three farmers here. But you got a lot of manufacturers. Remember when Obama said there'll be no more manufacturing? You'd need a magic wand. Well, we had 700,000 manufacturing jobs. You'd need a magic wand. All together, half of all auto manufacturing jobs in Michigan were wiped out. Think of that after the Biden-backed NAFTA and China disasters, China became powerful because of the World Trade Organization. It became powerful. A terrible, terrible thing for our country. And then Biden goes around saying, well, no, China's good for us. No, no, no. They haven't been. How have they been? No, I don't think so good. And then the plague on top of everything else, we got the plague sent in. He repeatedly tried to slash Medicare and Social Security. People didn't even know. Decade after decade, Biden has twisted his knife into the back of Michigan workers and workers all over the United States. You don't have to take my word for it. We have Joe on tape. Please roll the tape. My problem is I voted for NAFTA. I'm supporting NAFTA because I think it is a positive thing to do. And I do not pretend to be an expert on uh, international trade matters. Trade agreements like NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, which forced right. American workers to compete against people who are making pennies an hour, has resulted in the loss of 160,000 jobs. The president is absolutely right when he says that China has been cheating for 25 years and that Bill Clinton didn't, didn't do enough about it, George W. Bush didn't do enough about it, Barack Obama didn't do enough about it. The rising China is an incredibly positive development for not only China, but the United States and the rest of the world. Rising China is a positive, positive development. It is in our self-interest that China continue to prosper. We want to see China rise. China is a great nation, and we should hope for the continued expansion. China is not our enemy. We talk about China as our competitor. We should be helping. The idea that China is going to eat our lunch is bizarre. The idea that they are our competition, they're going to beat us, it's bizarre. They're not bad folks, folks. China's not a problem. Allowing China into the World Trade Organization, which he supported, extending most favored nation status to China, which he supported, that those steps allowed China to take advantage of the United States by using our own open trade deals against us. No, look, Do you think in retrospect that you were naive about China? No. But doesn't he deserve some credit for that? It's better. The USMCA is better than NAFTA. It is better than NAFTA. I to have respond. never said I oppose fracking. You said it on I, tape. I did show the tape. Put it on your website. I'll put it on. Put it on the website. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in a Biden administration? No, it would be, we, would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel. No more, no new fracking. I'd gradually move away from fracking. And I think it's critically important on day one that we end any fossil fuel leases on public lands. Oh, well, like, what about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yeah. pipeline infrastructure? Yeah, and, pipeline. And, and, exactly. and 
There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. I have one final would question. Would he close it down falls, the oil industry? It falls. Or would you close it down falls. the oil By the way, I would transition from the oil industry, yes. Oh, I would transition. That is a big In statement. terms of business, that's the biggest statement. Okay. Because basically what he's saying question, is he is Mr. going President. to destroy the oil industry. Okay. Will you remember that, Texas? Will you okay. remember that, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma? Vice President. Let me ask you a question, Joe. Yeah. You're right here with me. Yeah. Have you been on the floor of the Senate? You were in the Senate for a few years. Yeah. Time and time again, talking about the necessity, with pride, about cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, cutting veterans programs. No. You never said that. No. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans. But I meant every single solitary thing in the government. Look, here's the deal. You're an honest guy. Why don't you just tell the truth here? We all make I, mistakes. I, I am telling the truth. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. Joe, let me repeat it again. I want you just to be straight with the American people. I am saying that you have been on the floor of the Senate time and time again talking about the need to cut Social Security Medicare and veterans programs. Is that true or is that no, not true? No, it's not true. What that is, is not true? That is not true. I meant veterans, but I meant every single solitary thing in the government. Everything was on the table. I did not support any of those cuts in Social Security or in veterans. Whoa, benefits. whoa, whoa. You, you, everything was on the table. All right, you're right. You just said it, including, in your judgment, cuts to Social Security and veterans. In order to get the kinds of changes we need on other okay. things related... Joe, but, just, didn't, but we did not cut it. I, I know, because people it. like me helped stop that. All that I would say to the American people, go to YouTube. It's all over the place. Joe said it many, many times. And I'm surprised, you know, you can defend that or change your mind on it, but you can't deny the reality. Now, to be fair, maybe Biden's not telling us because he's forgotten his own plans. Watch Biden's staff quickly swoop in to shuffle him along during a quickie escape the basement trip to Pennsylvania. Here's the deal. One of the things that, that, that is important is that um, keep in mind, although they're going to vote on uh, uh, Barrett, I think today. That was terrifying. What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where, if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. Look, it's the whole thing is crazy. <laughs> is that crazy? Is that crazy as race? There's that craziest race. Our country cannot be put in that position. We have too much going, too much potential. <laughs> we cannot be put in that position. So you got to do what's right. Because one thing we know, President Xi of China is not like that. President Putin of Russia, there's nobody been tougher than Russia. Nobody been tougher than me to Russia. They want me to lose so badly. He's not like that. Kim Jong-un, remember, we're going to be in a war with North Korea. What happened? What happened to the war? Kim Jong-un, not like that. They're top of the game, and most of the leaders top of the game. We, we can't have that. We can say... Hey, gee, that's wonderful, but we can't have that. We can't have that. We have too much potential. We're going to have the greatest year ever next year. We had the greatest year we've ever had. We had to stop it. We learned about the disease. We saved 2 million lives. Remember, it was going to be 2.2 million people were going to die. That was the model. We saved 2 million lives, and now we understand we protect our seniors. But we can't have that. In 2016, Michigan voted. That's a lot of people. Look at it. As far as, you know, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing the sound. It sounds like it's from 20 miles away. It almost is. Thank you. 
Thank you. In 2016, Michigan voted to fire this corrupt political establishment, and you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. We're putting it first. And you know, a lot of times, because I've become friendly with many of the presidents and prime ministers, kings and queens, dictators, I must tell you, dictators, but I've become friendly with a lot of them, and they've, they say with two things, it's incredible what you've done with the economy. They always say that. They always say it no matter what. They say, we have done the most incredible job, and they always start off by congratulating me. The next question is, they want to buy our military equipment because we make the best equipment anywhere in the world. And sadly, with many of these nations who are not that friendly, we have to say no. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Anyway, I don't sound like a politician because I'm not a politician. I never wanted to be a politician. I became a politician for one very specific reason, because we're doing a job in the history of our country, in the first three and a half years, nobody has done what we, what we and this administration has been able to do with regulations, with taxes, with rebuilding our military, with strengthening our borders. By the way, our border, the strongest it's ever been. We're building 10 miles a week. The wall is almost finished. They don't want to talk about the wall. Remember, that's all they talked about was the wall. The wall's never going to get built. It's never going to get built. Then I got it built. It's almost completed. They don't want to talk about it. And Mexico is paying for the wall. Remember that, please. If I don't always play by the rules of Washington and the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you, and I fight harder than any president has ever fought before. One of the biggest issues for Michigan, as you know, is this race and in this whole thing. It's the race. It's all the subject of refugees and what's happening with refugees and where are they coming from. Biden has pledged. And you saw what happened the other day in France. Biden has pledged a 700 percent increase. This was done in the manifesto with Bernie Sanders. Crazy Bernie. He's crazy. Is he crazy or what? But we love him because we got a big pile of his people last time with Crook and Hillary, and they're going to come again because we're, we're right on trade. One thing Bernie Sanders understood, our country was being ripped off on trade by our allies and our foes, okay, by everybody. And he got it. He couldn't do anything about it. But his people came over, large percentages of people. They, people find that hard to believe, but they understood trade. Biden has pledged a 700 percent increase. This is in conjunction with Crazy Bernie and AOC plus three, who knows less about this stuff than any human being on Earth, but she does have a good line of crap. <laughs> a 700 percent increase in refugees from the most dangerous terror hotspots on the planet, including Syria, Somalia. You know, when I think of Somalia, I think of Omar. Omar. Ilhan, Ilhan Omar, who truly does not like our country. You know, we are going to win Minnesota because of Omar. Because of Omar, she likes telling us what we should do, how we should run our country. Isn't that nice? Omar, no, we're going to win. She hates our country. And we're going to win also because the National Guard went in. You must should have been called a lot sooner. But the National Guard went into Minneapolis, and it was a beautiful sight. It took, what, 22 minutes? It was over. After a week and a half of destroying Minneapolis. So I think between Ilhan Omar, Ilhan Omar, and, be, and really what happened with respect, we stopped it. They should have called us a week and a half early. We're going to win Minnesota. First time since, think of that. First time, I don't, want to, I don't want to guarantee, I don't want to guarantee anything. I'm a little bit superstitious, but I want to tell you they like us. They like us in Minnesota. And how, to, and how the hell she gets elected, I cannot understand it. His policies will turn Michigan into a refugee camp. It's true. He's a, she goes, I know, you're right about that. Who said that, right? She just said, I know. 
Everybody knows. He's also vowed to terminate our national security travel bans. I got a travel ban. I said, I want a ban. I took a lot of heat. You remember that right at the beginning? Because if it's okay with you, I don't want to have people that want to blow up our country. I don't want to have people that want to kill our people. So we instituted a travel ban. And it was rejected by the first court, rejected by the second court. Ultimately, it was approved by the U.S. Supreme Court. We have a travel ban. And now, if we have countries that want to do harm to us, if we have people that want to do harm, we say, stay the hell out. It's very easy. We got a travel ban. And we're not going to open the floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. We're not doing it. I've ended the influx of refugees from terrorist regions, you know that, and I'm keeping the jihadists and the violent extremists the hell out of our country, if that's okay. Now, maybe you want them, I don't know, maybe you want them. Maybe Michigan, let's take a vote. Would anybody like them to come to the wonderful state of Michigan? Oh, God. I thought I knew you pretty well. <laughs> No, it's, you know, it's not easy doing this stuff, and it's, you know, very unpopular. The people go after you, but you have to do it. You have to do, ultimately, I do what's right, and people understand it. People understand it. Together, we will continue to protect American families, fight for American workers, support our police, defend our Second Amendment. which has been under siege. If I were not your president, you wouldn't have a Second Amendment right now. Secure our borders and ensure more products are proudly stamped with the beautiful phrase, made in the USA. And by the way, do I look soaking wet? Because the media is going to get on. They're going to say, he looked like hell today. He didn't look good. His hair was terrible. It was all horrible. He looked bad. He looked bad. He looked like he was sweating. Does he have a fever? No. It's 32 degrees out here, and it's, it's freezing, and it's raining, and I'm just trying to keep up with the tough people of Michigan. That's all. See, I was going to ask you permission to put the hat on, right? No? No? Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's a good hat. It'll be on eBay. It'll be on eBay tonight. We will deliver record prosperity, epic job growth, and a safe vaccine that eradicates the virus and quickly ends the pandemic. And we've done things that nobody believed we could do. And the vaccines are coming right around the corner. And if I weren't here, it would have taken two, three, four years before you had this stuff. It's happening now. The greatest companies in the world doing it. Normal life will fully resume. And that's what we want, right? We want normal life. Normal life. Take us back. Take us back. Seven months ago, we want normal life. We had the greatest economy in the history of our country. That's what we want. Normal life. Just think of it. That's all we want. You know, if we didn't have the plague come in from China, it wasn't even going to be like we had an election. The only bad part is I probably wouldn't be standing out here in the freezing rain with you. I'd be home in the White House doing whatever the hell I was doing. I wouldn't be out here and, you know, we're going to two other great places after this. You know that, right? This is stop number one. I'll get off the plane. At least you were the first stop because I'll get off the plane and they'll say, he looks like hell. What happened to... The what happened to our president? Look at these people. What happened to our president? He looks terrible. This election is a choice between a Trump super recovery or a Biden depression. You're going to have a depression. Your 401ks down the tubes. Look how great our stock market. I had a little blip yesterday because Nancy Pelosi will not approve stimulus. That's all. But it's a choice between a Trump boom or a Biden lockdown. But you're already locked down. I mean, this state, we got to get her going. I don't know. We got to get her going. I don't think she likes me too much.
See, I don't comment on that, because every time, if I make just even a little bit of a nod, they say, the president led them on. No, you, I don't have to lead you on. Even a little nod, they say, the president said, right? They asked me that question in a crazy 60 Minutes. Wasn't she rude? She just kept asking me questions. And then they interviewed Sleepy Joe, and it was like everybody just fell asleep. And they got great ratings. That's unfortunate. They got such good ratings that they'll want to do it again and again. But now, wasn't that terrible, the difference? One is anger, craziness, right? Fire coming out of her eyes. I look, she sits down, she said, are you prepared for tough questions? I said, just be fair, just be fair. No, no, I mean, tough questions. And I said, this is the way it starts. With Biden, it's, hello, Mr. Vice President. How about, did you see the reporters out? He was walking around with ice cream, right? What, what flavor is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. No, he knew, he said he had vanilla. And I said, I don't get, see those killers back there? I don't get soft questions like that. But you know, I was being interviewed by somebody. I had a group of terrible, terrible people. Sometimes I'll do an interview just to see if it's so bad, because I can do very good. I can answer the question. I take all the smiling, all the fun. I just boom, boom, boom. Nobody can do that. Boom, boom. Give him a perfect interview. And then I realized it's hopeless with these people. They're just hopeless. And I looked at him, and we're in the Oval Office. I said, you know, you're very unfair. You're very dishonest. You're corrupt people. But you know what? We're in the Oval Office. I'm here, and you're not. What? I'm here, and you're not. And I sent them on their way, and then I read the article the next day. It was terrible. It was just a, It bore no relationship to what I told them, but these are minor details. It's a shame. You know, if we had an honest media, this country would come together so fast. It's true. We have... Not all of them, but they're some of the most corrupt people on earth. They are so, and you see it. You see it with the Biden corruption. They don't even want it. They won't cover it. They won't talk about it. And that includes big tech. Section 230, Section 230. Does anybody know about Section 230? It's a choice between our plan to kill the virus or Biden's plan to kill the American dream. That's what he wants to do. He wants to lock you all up. Let's keep, let's stay locked up. And you know, so I caught it. But I said, hey, I mean, I was given options. I could have stayed in the basement of the White House for a year and a half, but I'm your president. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't stay in the basement of the White House. I can't stay in a beautiful bedroom upstairs for a year and a half, I'm your president, and I'd go to meetings, and there'd be a lot of people at those meetings, and I'd say, this perhaps is dangerous, I don't know, this perhaps, and then one day, sir, sir, our great White House physician, White House doctor, he's here today, Sean, where is Sean, is he around? He's, he's become more famous than I am, White House doctor. I'd, I saw so many doctors when I was in that bed. I said, doctor, I don't feel good. I had more great doctors, more talent than you've ever seen. They were lying around that. I told the story. They were lying 12, 12 doctors. Johns Hopkins, uh, all of them. Walter Reed is so incredible. The medical military hospital. The doctors, they really are great, but there were a lot of them. I said, I don't feel great, doc. I got to be honest with you. It's been a long time, but I don't feel great. And they grabbed me, every one of them, they grabbed different parts of my body. They all were specialists. They were specialists. And the bottom line is I took something, Regeneron, which we're making available to everybody that needs it free. And Eli Lilly makes something very similar. And we, got, we have things that we didn't even know about, think about six months ago. And I don't know if it was the strength of me. I'd like to give me full credit. I don't want to give... No, I don't want to give the drug. I was telling somebody the other day, I don't want to give the drug any credit. I want to say, because I am a very young person that's in perfect physical shape. I took that virus. And I woke up the next morning and I felt like Superman. It's true. I wanted to get out of there. I said, doctors, get me the hell out of there. Get me out. But it's true. No, great doctors. But we know things that we didn't know. We didn't know. We had no idea about much of the stuff. And you see mortality rate. You see where that is now. And 
People go in, you get better. They say you have immunity, that you can go in. I could jump, see this crowd right here? I could jump right in. I could give, I could give every woman and every man, I'd even kiss the men. I could give every woman and every man right here a kiss and I wouldn't catch it, I have immunity. And until I came along, you know, you used to hear you have immunity for life, right? As soon as I had it and got better, they were not too happy about that. And they said, the speed, this guy got better. But you know what, as soon as I had it, it got better. I said I had immunity. It was supposed to be for life. When it was me, they said it's only good for four months, okay? <laughs> okay. Anybody else is for life. With Trump, they said it's four months. So they brought it down now, immunity from life to four months. And you know now with them, you can't watch anything else. Turn on. COVID, 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 well, we have a spike in cases. You ever notice they don't use the word death, they use the word cases, cases. Like Baron Trump is a case. He had sniffles. He was sniffling. One Kleenex, that's all he needed. One, that was it. And he was better. But he's a case, okay? He's a case, Baron Trump. Young people cases. And you know why we have so many cases? Because we test more, so we go around and they're a very, by the way, we're testing very young people, too. We're testing people in school. We're testing everybody. In many ways, I hate it. In many ways, I hate it. We test everybody. And because of that, now, if I tested half, if I said, we are going to cut our testing down in half, they'd go crazy because the cases would go down in approximately half, right? And then we're going to cut it down in half once again. And there are other countries that don't do testing, and they show very few cases. I mean, it's a very simple thing. But overall, it's good to have the testing. We find out where it is, and there are a lot of things. But they use it to make us look bad. But here's the story. It's COVID, COVID, COVID. You can't watch anything else. On November 4th, you won't be hearing so much about it, OK? November 4th. On November 4th, you'll hear it's getting better. It's getting better. You watch. No, no, they're doing heavy COVID because they want to scare people. And uh, people, people get it. I'll tell you, they understand these people better than... You are smarter than most of the political people in this world. You get it. Get it. Very smart. No, November 4th, you'll see there's a big difference. And I'll tell you what. You know what else is going to happen on November 4th? Trump. Your governor. Trump. Your governor at the urging of her husband who has abused our system very badly. The only man allowed in the state of Michigan, the only man allowed to go sailing is her husband. No, your governor, I don't think she likes me too much. Hey, 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 hey. I'm the one, it was our people that helped her out with her problem. I mean, we'll have to see if it's a problem, right? People are entitled to say, maybe it was a problem, maybe it was. It was our people, my people, our people, that helped her out. And then she blamed me for it. She blamed me, and it was our people that helped her. I don't get, I don't get it. How did you put her there? How did you put, how's John James doing, good? He's good. Oh, you see, I didn't even know he's here. John, wow, is that nice? Wow, I didn't even know, see, I'm thinking about you, and I don't even know you're here, John. I picked him out of a group of people they all had loaded up with money. John had money, he's successful. Well, he was really successful, he's in the military. He could pilot a helicopter better than anybody I hear. Uh, wow. And I said, who the hell is that guy? It's true, I saw John, I saw John. <laughs> Go ahead. This is our, that's an honor of John. No, no, no. I, but I, here's what happened, real quick. I saw John, I saw four people, a different position. He's running for a different thing. He did great, by the way. But I saw four rich guys, and I saw John. And I said, go back. The world's greatest invention, right? Not television, TiVo. Because without TiVo, television is useless. <laughs> so I say, who is that? I don't know. Was, I think his name's John James. I said, do me a favor, go back. Now, the other guys had a lot of money. They were spending a lot of money, right? Four, I think four guys, four guys. I said, that guy, I'm pretty good at this stuff. That guy can be a star, yeah. right? I called him, I spoke to him, I endorsed him. 
The four rich guys will never talk to me again, but that's okay. They were gonzo. That was the end of them. And he ran a phenomenal race. And now I'm hearing, John, that you're actually leading. He's running against a guy, Peters. Think of it, John James is running against a senator, a U.S. senator that nobody has ever heard of before. Even in Washington, Peters. I said, who the hell is Peters? He's a senator from Michigan. Nobody's ever heard of him. I I'll tell you what, if one thing comes out of this small group of thousands of people, vote for John James, okay? He's a great guy. But I'm going to introduce him in a second. If Biden and the Democrat Socialists are elected, they will dismantle your police departments, dissolve our borders, indoctrinate your children, and destroy the suburbs. You know, they were talking about suburban women don't like Donald Trump. I said, I think they do. I think they do. I got rid of a regulation that will destroy the suburbs. I got rid of it. I said, Ben Carson. Let's do it, Ben. And we did it. Nobody else would do it. And if, if Biden never got in, if he ever came in, it would come back and you could forget about the suburbs. And one thing I know about suburban women, well, I was supposed to do badly with women the last time, remember? At the end, they called it that night. They said, Donald Trump, at the beginning, they said, no, he won't win because he doesn't do well with women. I said, really? Just tell me about that. And then... <laughs> This guy goes, only Rosie O'Donnell. Can you believe it? <laughs> who, who said that? You? What are you, a comedian or something? So, so they said, Donald Trump, it will be a very short evening. They were very happy about that. And then we started winning. We won Florida. We won Georgia. We won South Carolina, North Carolina. We ran the whole streak. Then we won Michigan, right? We won. We won Michigan. We won Wisconsin. I mean, you know, they were coming. We won Pennsylvania. Anyway, at the end of the evening, they were analyzing it. They said, you know what? Donald Trump did great with women. Big part of it. And that's going to happen again. Because women, suburban or otherwise, they want security. They want security. They want safety. They want law and order. They have to have law and order. And we're going to do great. And I love women, and I can't help it. They're the greatest. I love them much more than the men. Much more than the men. So I'm saving suburbia. I'm getting your kids back to school. Get your kids back to school. You know, we won that big Supreme Court case against your governor. So what the hell happened? Why isn't it open? It's still not open? You know, we sued. We won the case. What are they appealing? She's appealing the case. Hey, governor, let your state open. Get your kids back to school, Governor. Not a good governor. And you know what else? I'm also getting your husbands. They want to get back to work, right? They want to get back to work. We're getting your husbands back to work, and everybody wants it. And the cure can never be worse than the problem itself. And let me tell you, when she keeps everybody locked up like a prison, your drugs and alcohol and abuse and suicide and so many things, so many bad things are happening. She's got to get it back. And this goes for Pennsylvania. You have a Democrat, all Democrats. You have a Democrat governor. It goes for North Carolina. We're doing great in both. We're winning both of those states. You have a governor in each one, and you have a couple of others. Look at what's going on in New York with Cuomo. It's horrible. It's like a ghost town. And the crime is way up. Get the, and California has to open up. California has to open up. I mean, what are you going to do? I see people today, store owners, they don't know what to do. They're going to be arrested if they open up their little small business. They can't survive. It's a horrible thing that's going on. Get your states opened up. And this governor should get her state opened up. The last administration nearly extinguished the U.S. auto industry from the job, killing it almost the job-killing Trans-Pacific Partnership, and I ended it, I stopped it, to their horrendous Korea trade deal that was a Hillary Clinton special. Remember, she said, we will produce 250,000 jobs if we sign this deal, and she was right for South Korea. They produced 200. They got them, you didn't get them. To the outrageous fuel economy standards where they're making it impossible to build a car in this country. It's outrageous. We sued California 
we sued a lot of people because we can build a better car, a safer car, a more important car for a lot less money. Think of that. Better, better looking, safer, a little heavier, for a little bit more fuel, a little bit more. You're talking about a glass, a little bit more fuel. And that will take 10 and 15 and 20-year-old versions off. You know, the gas guzzlers out of the thing. Overall, environmentally, it'll be so good. And we're suing California. Think of it, a better car, a safer car, and you'll save $3,500 a car. And we actually have a lawsuit on this. We're going to build better, cheaper, safer, and we actually have a lawsuit. I mean, it's not even believable. Over a little glass of, because the difference between an engine that works and doesn't work is a half a glass of fuel. And we have plenty, as we've proven, you know, we're the number one in the world. We have plenty of gasoline. We have plenty of gasoline. And it would be great for your car business. And frankly, your car business, they ought to get in gear because they're so afraid of the environmentalists. You know, they're so afraid. Oh, I don't know. I mean, they're willing to spend thousands more to build a car. I say, fellas, are you sure? There are a couple of them that are very smart that like what I say. I'll tell you who the smart ones are someday. I reversed each and every one of those Obama-Biden disasters, and now Biden wants to reinstate all of them. Everything that we've knocked out in terms of regulations, it would take 20 years to build a highway. We have it down to two years. To get the approvals would take 20 years, even longer. We have it down to two. I want to get it down to one, and it may get rejected for environmental or safety reasons. I want to get it down to one. But you have to see what we've done is a miracle. And that's one of the reasons it's been so successful. I also ended the NAFTA nightmare and replaced it with the brand new USMCA. And the USMCA is expected to create tens of thousands of auto jobs and include powerful productions to keep your auto lines going. You wait till you see what happens. It's just kicking in right now. And one of the biggest beneficiaries will be a state named Michigan. And when General Motors went bankrupt, Biden and Obama threw the workers of the Delphi Corporation to the wolves. Anybody from Delphi here? Because somebody, if you're here, you got to like Trump because we're working on getting their pensions taken care of because they were taken advantage of. You know about that. I signed an order to restore the pensions and health care benefits promised to workers in Wisconsin, Ohio, and Michigan. So they were treated very badly, and so were you. I will never let anyone rip off our great American worker. I will not do it. Joe Biden has made a corrupt bargain exchange for his party's nomination. He has handed control of his party over to the rage-filled socialists, Marxists, and left-wing extremists. If Biden wins, the flag-burning radicals on the streets will be running your government, like in Portland, the anarchists, the Antifa. Hey, Antifa. You ever notice they never want to go after Antifa? Nobody wants to take on it. They all want to go after anybody, but they don't want. And I keep saying, well, how are we doing with Antifa? The anarchists, this election day, you must stop the anti-American radicals by delivering Joe Biden and the far left a thundering defeat. We have to make this. You have to get out there on Monday, Tuesday, Sunday. I don't care. Today, you have to get out there and vote. You're going to most of you are going to vote because you believe in voting like I do. I just left. I just voted two days ago. I voted. I went to a booth. And they actually asked me, sir, may I please have your identification? But no, they, and they're right in doing it. I gave her a passport. Sir, do you have additional identification? Here's a type. Come on, what are you doing? You're going to embarrass me here. This is crazy. No, she was great. I mean, I'll tell you what, there's no cheating with that. You go to a place, they want identification, they want this. You fill out your form, they walk you over to a machine, you put it in. I mean, these ballots. It's turning out to be exactly what I said, right? You see what's going on. Who's sending them? Where are they going? Who's sending them back? Who's signing them? Now they want to have unverified signature. One of the governors wants to have no signature at all. Just send it back. What a horrible thing. Especially since I see so, you know, I watch it so closely this time when I voted. It was so professional. You go in and most of these people, the red wave, generally speaking, you go, if not Tuesday, Monday, you know, whatever. 
How many people are going to vote? How many people? How many people have already voted? All right, good. You're, you're sort of a late state. That's good. That's good. Pennsylvania is a very, you know, they just, they all vote that last day. But they go. They want to go to a polling booth. You're like that. Everybody, look, this is the most important election in the history of our country. Every, or I wouldn't be standing here like this. Every, everybody, you got to go out and vote. You got to go out and vote. Joe Biden is a corrupt politician. You've seen that. He wants to send your jobs to China while his family rakes in millions of dollars from the Chinese Communist Party and other places. If Biden wins, China wins. And by the way, China will own the United States. You saw that clip up there. They will own it. China's wonderful. There has never been anyone or anything or any country that has ripped us off like China. We will win. You will win. Michigan will win. And America will win. You got to go and vote. So we're joined today by some great warriors. I introduced one, but I'll introduce him again because he's so important, and that's John. But representatives, Jack Bergman. John Molinar, Tim Wahlberg, they're incredible. I'll tell you what, they have been with me right from the beginning, right, fellas? They, they like you, you know, they like you. Michigan House Speaker, Lee Chatfield. Lee, young guy, Lee, a young guy. RNC Chairwoman, who, by the way, ran my Michigan campaign four years ago. Ronna McDaniel. She ran it so good that I said when we won, I said, you know, I have the person, uh, the head of the Republican Party. I said, I want to get somebody. I said, you know what I'll do? Get me the woman that won Michigan. She ran. What the hell is her name? Her name is, okay. Her name's Ronna. Good. She would call me. I'd come. I'd make a speech. I'd leave. Call me the next day. Sir, you have to come back. You have to come back. You have to come back. I said, look, I'll do it one more time. Because, you know, Michigan hadn't been won like in 36 years. I said, look, I'll do it one more time. That's it. I came back. She said, that's it, sir. Don't worry about it. I left. Two days later, I get a one more phone call. Sir, one more visit. And we did. You know, Michigan was the last stop that I made. Right? I made it in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It was one o'clock in the morning. Crooked Hillary had come in with Barack Hussein Obama. And they came in together with Bill Clinton, actually, and all of them. And it was unscheduled, meaning they found out they had a problem, right? It was unscheduled. They were not, and they got here at seven o'clock. They had 500 people. I got here at one o'clock in the morning. Started speaking at one in the morning in Grand Rapids. We had 32,000 people. Two. And remember, it was now, okay, think of this, it was now election day. So it's now election day. In fact, I got home and our future first lady said to me, uh, are you crazy? <laughs> you know, I, get home. I got home at four in the morning, but Ronna did a fantastic job. Right? Congressman, are we doing okay? Are we winning it? And the great John James is gonna win, huh? Right? Michigan GOP Chair, Laura Cox, who's terrific. Thank you, thank you. How are we doing, Laura? Are we up? They said two points. That's not enough. We got to get a little more than that, right? They said two points today. The great Ted Nugent. Ted. Ted. Great Ted. He's the only one really dressed properly. For this. Thank you, Ted. Very good. Great job. We appreciate it, too. The president of the Police Officers Association of Michigan, Jim Tiganelli. Jim. Oh, he, he's like central casting. Jim, central casting. Candidates for Congress, some really good ones. Paul Young. Paul Young. Good, Paul. You're doing well, I hear. Good, Paul. And the next U.S. Senator from the great state of Michigan, the legendary John 
James. I tell you, he's working so hard. Just get it. Just keep working, John. Keep working. We built the greatest economy in history, and now we are doing it again. We increased middle class family income over six thousand dollars more than five times again. Think of this. Five times again in all eight years under the last administration. African American unemployment, Hispanic American unemployment, and Asian American unemployment all reached their lowest levels ever recorded. Think of that. What we had going, and we had to close it up, and now we're opening it again to record. Since April, we created a record 11.4 million jobs. For decades, our politicians spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders. But now we are finally protecting our nation, rebuilding our cities, and we are bringing our jobs, our factories, and our troops back home to the USA. Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in United States history. That's what we've done. It's an amazing thing what we've done. My opponent's insane immigration plan would completely eliminate U.S. borders. They don't want to have borders. Without a border, you don't have a country. By implementing a nationwide catch and release, you catch a criminal, murderer, rapist, and you release him into our country, and then he's supposed to come back for a trial in two years. And we had the argument during the debate. Did anybody see the debate the other night? No. Quite a debate. He would make every community into a sanctuary city for violent criminals. My administration is finding the illegal immigrant and the criminals, gang members, the MS-13 killers, and we are either putting them in jail or sending them back home, and their home has to take them. They didn't used to take them. We invested 2.5 trillion dollars into the U.S. military. Much of it spent in Michigan. And we have the finest, greatest equipment anywhere in the world. We are the envy of the envy of the world. Russia, China, there's no country. We are the envy of the world. The best equipment in the world, all made in the USA. We also passed VA Choice and VA Accountability. We killed the leader of ISIS, Al Baghdadi, and we took out the world's top terrorist. Soleimani is dead. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal—150 billion, 1.8 billion in cash. What a stupid deal! And the first call I get, if we win, we got to win. First call I get will be from Iran. They're going to want to make a deal so badly because their economy is in tatters. I recognize the true capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. And instead of never-ending wars, we are forging peace in the Middle East. A vote for Republicans is a vote for the American dream. That's what it is. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. Over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world. This state right here, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. Our military is now the strongest it's ever been by far. When I first came in, they told me, "Sir, we have no ammunition." That's a true story, and no president should ever hear that again. We will end surprise medical billing. Require price transparency already signed, January 1st. Lower drug prices even more, and we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. 
We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, in God we trust. Right? For years you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Michigan. See, now Biden would do that and he'd say, for the great people of... How many times did he do that? Like seven? Standing up for the great people of Iowa. Sir, sir, it's Michigan. It's... There's no recovery from that, right? When you do that, you just walk off the stage, right? You can't... I always say the great Winston Churchill is a great orator. Even if Winston Churchill did it, he would just walk off the stage. But he didn't do that, you know. But Sleepy Joe does it a lot. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your co-workers. Don't let the radicals win. Get out and vote. Most important election I believe, and I never thought I'd say this because of what happened four years ago, this is the most important election in the history of our country. On November 3rd, we must finish the job and drain the swamp once and for all. We've, we've gone a long way from Midland to Mackinac, from Pontiac to Battle Creek, great things, and from Detroit to right here in Lansing, we stand on the shoulders of Michigan patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears for this beloved nation. This is the state where Henry Ford invented the assembly line. Think of that. So much, so much has been done in Michigan. It's the place where General Motors, Chrysler, and Kellogg revolutionized entire industries. Think of that. Michigan gave us Motown, the Mustang, and the unrivaled might of the American Midwest, the American Midwest. We got it all. I think I got every single vote in the America. I like the Midwest. We made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world, and the best is yet to come. That's true. Proud citizens like you help build this country. And together, we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Michigan, we have made America powerful again, our military. We have made America wealthy again. Stop. 401ks, keep them nice and hot. I don't want to see you throw them out. These things aren't worth anything. Your 401ks are just about at an all-time high. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Michigan. Go out and vote. Go out and vote.